Good morning and welcome to today's virtual bridge session. Uh, we're all going to be involved in a world, no doubt, of many more online meetings, uh, classes, webinars, workshops. And there's a question as to how to keep these uh, engaging because uh, we can all be doing quite a lot of them. Uh, I'm pleased to have with us Esther Barrett, who's a subject specialist here at JISC, and who will be taking us through some tips. Um, this is all in an informal session, so please throw in your questions as we go. If you're watching the recording, then of course you can engage with JISC in many different ways. Uh, with that, I'll let you pass over to Esther. Thank you. So as Jason said, it's um, <clears throat> an informal workshop. Um, this is a workshop which I normally deliver in Adobe Connect. And I don't know if anyone, what I want to do is make sure that the chat poll is open during the course of this. So I'm just gonna open my chat at the same time. Um, and there's a poll in there as well. So let me just get my chat open as well. And I'm lucky enough to have two screens so I can have the chat poll open on the bottom screen. <clears throat> I can see some of your faces as well. So if you wanna give me a little wave, I can see some of you there. So yeah, that's lovely, thank you. So if people wanna like signal or give me a thumbs up, that's fine too. And also I've got the chat pane open. So if you, if I want you to do some things that I would do in Adobe Connect in a different way, I'm gonna do them in Zoom in another different way. And this is all a bit of an experiment for me. So you are gonna bear with me, aren't you? Because uh, I've not delivered this session as such in, um, in Zoom before, but hopefully um, as, as Jason said, it will give you some hints and tips about ways of engaging with your invisible audience. So there's a poll on the screen now. I hope you can see that. And it's asking you, uh, can you set this up for me actually? Because I didn't have access to the meeting beforehand, but in lots of platforms, you can set things up beforehand, um, which is great. And polls, a lovely way of getting people to interact with you. So which one of these applies to you? Um, you've delivered interactive stuff online. You've delivered broadcast style uh, things online. You've attended or you've attend, attended interactive type uh, sessions or you've attended broadcast type sessions. And it's lovely to see uh, as I go through time doing this workshop that more and more people are ticking the uh, interactive, that they've delivered interactive and attended interactive sessions before. Because I think uh, if you'd have asked the same question about a year ago, most people would have just been broadcast webinars and that was about it really. So it's lovely to see that th those numbers are going up and up. So thank you for sharing. Oh, I think I need to end the polling so that you can see the result and then I can share the result. There you go. So I think you're seeing it now, hopefully, uh, the results of that, uh, uh, of that poll. So thank you for that. Polls can be obviously a great way of starting conversations and, and getting the ball rolling when it comes to whatever it is that you're uh, delivering your online session. So I'll just close that now. You can see my screen, hopefully. It says uh, Yon TA. And I've got a way of being able to just move those slides along. Uh, welcome to the session. Come inside, it says. So this is um, a little bit different from doing it. Every platform is different with this one, with Zoom. If I wanted to share my screen with you, I would um, reshare every time. Uh, and that's fine as well. So just uh, hopefully we have been welcoming you into the room. Hopefully everybody's comfortable. That's the kind of thing that we do um, when we're setting up these online sessions. And the workshop, the full workshop, uh, which I'm giving you a taster of takes an hour. So really there are gonna be some bits which I really super quick skip over. Um, but if anybody does want to have this workshop for a kind of um, uh, network scenario, I'd be happy to deliver the, the thing uh, in, as a whole. So this is what you're hopefully seeing in front of you or something similar at least. You've got a participants pane and a chat pane to the right and you've got some um, buttons along the bottom where you can open your chat and your participant pane and you can also give a couple of reactions as well which is quite nice. You can get people to give you a reaction. So if everyone just wants to give me a, uh, yes, I think there's a choice of a smiley face and a, a th oh, it's a thumbs up, isn't it? So give me a thumbs up. And then occasionally giving a thumbs up might be um, a good way to get everybody's feedback. And you can ask them, give me a thumbs up if you're using this or that or the other, um, or a, a yes and a no type um, response as well. So we're all, we've got the chat pane open. So if everyone could just say hi to me in the chat pane and just say where you are, that would be lovely. 
you can, I, because everyone's got fake backgrounds now, you can never tell what's going on in people's lives. But tell me where you are. You can tell me what the weather's like if you like. Oh, Kenzie already has. Sunny Cumbernauld. Lovely. Thank you. I'll just, I'm going to be pronouncing things badly here because I'm from the southeast of England and it's notoriously difficult. Uh, I live in Wales and you should, it's, it's tricky. I tell you, my own village is pronounced Cumchimbeth. So they were rainy Ayrshire, back bedroom in West Edinburgh. That's, yeah, that's people's lives now, isn't it? Overcast Alva, lovely. Camberslang, I think I might have said that wrong. Camberslang, overcast and Camberslang. Okay, thank you, Diane, for naughty. Uh, ignore the clouds. Yes, quite right. We'll just pretend it's nice. Good. Okay, thank you. So... Uh, we've done the poll, so that's lovely. I have asked Kenji to allow um, annotation tools. Annotation tools are your friend, really. This is, uh, these, you can do some quite interesting things with annotation tools, um, which hopefully we'll see in a bit. So, um, also the polls have popped up on my, uh, <laughs> popped up on my, just so you know, Kenji and Jason, the polls have now popped up on my screen, so that's possible to do. So if you're going to, you'll see a little, um, you should see, a little toolbar along the top and I'm hoping that it's got an annotation there for you. I'm not seeing it at the moment. So Kenji, no, it's not there. Okay, so um, do you, Kenji, give me a, a sort of hand signals to, to tell me if you think that I should skip the parts with annotation. So we could do the annotation, but it would involve people stopping the session and rejoining because okay, although let, we've yes sorry i'll just give you in that case uh, what i'll do is i'll just tell you what i would do and just keep it in mind for your own um for your own delivery because it can be a lovely way of getting people involved and if, i don't know have people give me a thumbs up if you've been in zoom sessions or other sessions where annotation has been used give me a thumbs up or a so people i'm not getting that many actually so I'm see what I'm seeing is that the disc people in Kenji have and that others perhaps haven't. I'm just going to maybe spread that down a bit, see if I can see a few more people. Sandra has. Um, it can be a really nice way of getting people involved in the session. Uh, Beth saying confused. Is it like the whiteboard in Teams? Yeah, that's a really good. Um, that's a really good way of putting it. Actually, the every every platform is different, of course. And in Teams, you've got that whiteboard, which which hasn't got much much functionality. And then you've got um, an app, whiteboard app in Teams, which has much more functionality and is really really good. I've got um, a blog post for you, um, which is about teaching in Teams, um, which I can just show you if you would like me to. So basically what I've got here are some um, blog posts, which I don't oh, know, I need to stop the share and then share it again, I think, don't I? This is the thing about Zoom, it's a tiny bit more clunky than um, some of the others. So hopefully you're seeing um, a blog post now in front of you, teaching Microsoft Teams, and it gives you a few different links to tutorials and a few other ideas about how you can use this kind of live online techniques, <coughs> sorry, using mics, webcams, chat, screen share, whiteboard, polls, collaboration, those kinds of things. Um, and even breakout rooms are coming in Teams later on too. So I'll give you a link to that, um, to that blog post and into the chat pane there, if people find that quite useful. And then I'm going to uh, reshare my screen. <clears throat> Actually, just tell me, since this is a bit of an experiment, when I, no, I think I need to reshare it. I did a, um, a keynote in Zoom recently and it was a bit like this. I had to go back and forth between my pre the slides and the things I wanted people to do. So I was sharing my screen with them, um, doing things like a Kahoot quiz and, um, you know, a Mentimeter poll and things like that. So, uh, you know, it's all about having a bit of confidence, really. So if you were uh, stamping and using annotation, you can do things like get them to make a mark on the screen to give an opinion. So it's a different way of doing a poll in a way. You can ask them how they're feeling about things. I can't ask you that, but uh, you can tell me in the chat pane if you were able to annotate if, how you feel about doing these kinds of um, live in line 
live online interactions. And Kenji's just given some uh, useful uh, a tip there about the difference between Zoom annotation and, and um, Teams annotation as well. So excited is Kenji, sorry for shouting, that's no problem. So let me know in the chat pane how you're feeling about your live online delivery. Intrigued. Yeah, I think intrigued is a good word for it. If anyone's feeling nervous, don't worry. I started doing this about 10 years ago and um, it was a bit nerve wracking to begin with. And there's nothing wrong with being a bit nervous when you first start doing your live online delivery. But um, you get used to it and your confidence grows and you start to feel not too nervous. I mean, you can imagine my feelings this morning doing a, a, a workshop which I've delivered many, many times, but in a completely different platform with possibly not the same tools, um, but still making it hopefully an engaging experience. So you're intrigued and excited, which is lovely. So I'm gonna move that to the next one. What I often do at this point, and I'm so sorry you can't do it because I love doing this. I like to give them a word search. Um, all four says Jane, yeah, that's fair enough. <laughs> So I like to give them a word search. This, is a, this can be really good for um, sometimes as part of your teaching and learning, but actually it can be a really nice little activity for people to do when they're waiting to come into the room as well, depending on what sort of um, uh, platform you're using. You can allow them to use the pen tool and they can have a go at this and it usually takes about five minutes or so um, or as part of uh, what you do. There's lots of free online word search generators and it's just a bit of fun um, to get people just engaging with you and getting the hang of the idea that they're not just going to be listening, they are actually also going to be taking part as well. So word searches are great. This is, um, now I think it would be helpful for Kenji and Jason to tell me what time I actually need to finish as opposed to um, anything else, because I don't want you to anyone to be late for anything. Um, if we're done by, well, half past all, all together, then that's fine and then people uh, do this. We keep the session going for informal chat afterwards, but yes, I have sort of, uh, um, yeah, another five, ten minutes. Okay, thank you. So um, this is the, I'll probably just share with you the first part of uh, the mini session that I do, which is about um, live online teaching and learning, training, webinars, those kinds of things. The techniques are the same. I'll get you to just um, interact with me and Kenji's here till three. So I could just do the thing with about four times with you then Kenji, if you like. So uh, this is called engaging the invisible audience. This session is called Invas uh, the in engaging the invisible audience. And it's all about how you can design slides and activities to engage with people that are in the room with you. So what I'll probably do, um, bearing in mind the limitations of where we are and the time, I'll share with you the kind of gist of it, and then you can pop things into the chat pane as we go along. So Jane's giving me a smiley face, which is very nice. Thank you very much. So what we kind of look at is areas around simplicity, for example. So in the chat pane, and I'll do this now, you'll tell me, and in some tools you can bring in a separate chat pane, what is wrong with this slide? So let me know in the chat pane, what is wrong <laughs> with this slide? What would you change about this slide? Too much info, says Diane. Yeah, the writing's too small. Even on my massive screen, some of it's too small to read. Cluttered, says Jane, yeah. Little graphic com content, yeah. Not accessible, very good point as well, yeah. Bear in mind, I made this, <laughs> I made this slide as an example of how not to do it, of course, and and clearly there's things on there happening um, that, you know, everyone loves, loves the dog and the cat, but most people say they're a bit irrelevant, which is true, um, to be fair, but I like them. There are too many bullet points. There's lots of little graph things that you can't even read. Have you ever been, and I'm sure this is right forever, have you ever been in a session, pretty much everything says Sandra, have you ever been in a session where, you know, people have shown a slide on the screen, whether it's face to face, and they've said, oh, well, you won't be able to read this, but I've put it up anyway. And you're going, well, like, why did you, <laughs> why did you show me something that I, you know, I can't read? So there's all of that going on there as well, isn't it? So what this session does um, is to help people understand ways in which they can make their slides more functional, but at the same time, 
more accessible as well. So what we talk about is focal points. So at this point, I'd get you to draw on the screen to tell me where you think the focal point of this, uh, and Jane, you'll like this one because you're a dog person, um, to tell me the focal point of uh, where of this image. And then we talk a little bit about the rule of thirds and how images can be emotionally engaging. And we talk a little bit about um, how you might find free images as well, because copyright is uh, a huge issue when you're choosing images for your resources. Then we have a little think about typefaces, about the sizes of typefaces uh, and which ones are better or worse. Think about devices, the, si the size of the screen that the, the, the learner or the delegate is using. They might be using a mobile phone or they might be using a, a massive 24 inch screen like I am. So I just get people to indicate with the annotations which ones of the, the sizes and also the, the typefaces are the easiest for them to read. So we can kind of come to a consensus in the room about what are the best kinds of typefaces to use. We talk about, um, this is one of my favourite slides, I made this in myself as you can probably tell, but it's got far, far, far too much text on it of course, and I won't make you tell me in the chat pane that it's hideous for all of the reasons that you are thinking, the colours are terrible, there's too many things on there, the, the bullet points are awful, and so on and so on. So I get them to do that in the chat pane as well. Um, and really, the message of the one of one of the messages of this is that one point per, per slide is plenty, uh, especially if you're doing live online interactions, because you don't want them to be distracted away from the thing that you're you want them to focus on. I like to um, just share with them a few thoughts about contrast in terms of um, text and background. Can everyone in the chat pane just put in the letter there is, is which one is easiest to read for you? Is it A, B, C, D or E? So if you just put the letter in the chat pane there for me. So Kedji's put D, Jane's D as well. Yeah, Owen, Bill, D. I think probably we'll get, we're going to get a consensus here. Most people go for D, but it does lead to us to have a little chat about things like visual impairments and dyslexia and so on where different colors can mean different things to different people. And here's a little example of the way that contrast, bringing text and images together can create a very impactful uh, slide, which people will remember afterwards. And it's very simple. It's got two focal points, the image and the text. So if you just put into the chat pane for me, if you're liking this idea of how this slide has been put together, it can be incredibly useful when you've got portrait style slides uh, to be able to put the, um, the text on one side, if you want some text, and the image on the other. Yeah, you could swap them around, absolutely, if you felt like it. It's a good idea. I know sl this kind of slide design um, was an absolute revelation to me when I did the uh, Learning Performance Institute Colf course. And I don't know if Jason just wants to quickly look up the Learning Performance Institute for me and pop a link into the chat pane, but that might be very helpful just to share with people. So let me just scroll up a little bit and see what you've said. Good idea to, uh, for presenters to think about why they're using PowerPoint. Yeah, I mean, it's just a blank white square PowerPoint. <laughs> you know, everything I, a lot of what I do is in, it's not kind of PowerPoint, it's kind of what you do with it. Um, so, uh, and confidence props, people often put words on because they want to remember what to say. I use the notes for that for myself. Um, and Diane's saying, great idea. Not sure which bit about, but thank you for that. Looks classy, says Owen. Classy is a good, sophisticated, um, uh, um, intelligent, uh, allowing people to kind of, you know, people are intelligent, they know what they're looking at, but it's also quite emotive and people are able to draw their own um, feelings as well. Black and white is effective. And thank you for the link to the Learning Performance Institute as well. Everything we do here is based on the Colf principles which is the Certificate in Online Learning and Facilitation. So I know I've only got a couple of minutes left, but um, this is only the beginning of the session, of course, but uh, I'll just give you a little, yes, says Kenji, um, about templates, slide templates. I have to, um, I use templates for some things, but when it comes to designing practical activities for people, I tend to uh, use a blank white slide um, and I don't think anybody minds if you don't use a template slide for, um, you know, when you want people to actually do activities as a course, a part of a course or a workshop. I think it's a different kind of worms when you're standing up in front of a, an audience representing your organisation. 
So that's what I would suggest about that. We talk about balance, and this is one of my favorite slides here, which I'll just share with you. So the, this is the contrast between something like having an image, which is great, and having some words, which is also great, but also how you can bring those together a little bit more to create something a little bit more impactful. So I wonder if you just put a comment in the chat pane there, just to let me know what you think about the contrast between those two slides. The first one, which is a little bit more traditional, and then this second one, which all we've done is just spread out the image to fill the whole screen and then put the type into on top of the image, which can be a really nice way of, uh, of giving you some, um, yeah, Jane's saying the first one's easy to read. And I think that's absolutely, most people say this one's better for them, and especially in terms of impact, but certainly being a, easy to read is definitely a consideration. Size, colour and contrasting are great. Uh, reminds me of a social media meme. That's a very good point uh, there, Tony. And it could be something that we're used to um, now. This, design, this was designed probably 10 years ago, this slide, but it's become a thing, hasn't it? And for very good reason. It's more memorable and it sticks in your mind. Uh, more like a campaign, says, says Bill, a call to action. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you expected the quote to be from the women. Exactly. Yeah, you could have, you know, you could have had another image of, um, of, of Albert Einstein there if you had wanted to. It's all about what's going to work for you, really. So those, I just, the last thing I just want to share with you is that this one, um, which is another annotation exercise where we ask people to draw a line on the screen um, where their eye follows around um, the, the image on the screen. Because this is another way to use an image to get them to interact with you, to share what they think. So another way of kind of drawing in this particular case, where does your eye fall on the screen? So they usually draw from the lights to the face, to the text. So that's just another way to kind of um, express your, um, yourself using images, but also allowing the learner to join in as well um, with an activity. There you go, there's the line. So I give them an example of some of the ways in which uh, slide decks can be designed to uh, give a, a sense of unity, talking about colors, images, fonts, structure. I do like an alliteration. So I've got three S's and three R's there. You've probably noticed um, something about the structure of the deck, people knowing where they are in the course of things, knowing where they are in the learning process, Having dividing slides that kind of let the person know that they're coming on to the next bit of the session can be very helpful with uh, repeated layouts and recurring themes. And this is one I made a couple of years ago that's got lots of rainbows in it, which is particularly appropriate at the moment, um, but also is very, very easy on the eye as well. And it's got like dividing sections and, and headings and so on. Almost no words you'll probably see apart from the objectives of the session. And then we just mentioned a little bit of things about how to follow up. And I talk about enjoy your live online learning journey. And unbelievably, I've managed to um, just whisk you through uh, uh, an hours long workshop in about 15 minutes, which is probably a record even by my uh, standards. So this is the kind of question I'll ask people after the session. Um, and uh, most people do kind of uh, acknowledge the whole idea that perhaps their slides could be a little bit more user friendly and sometimes that interaction can be much more um, a part of the live online sessions that they deliver. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen now because I feel like I've done a very hard thing to you. <laughs> and I know I've done a lot of talking and I couldn't get you to draw, but it would have taken like an hour. So very well. well, thank you very much, Esther, for that. Well, um, the, I think the, any comments or questions that anyone wants to put before or I jump in myself. Well, I can see that um, there's a question here about attending the, the full workshop. We've been doing um, an hour, an hour, this hour workshop a couple of times a week uh, with JISC through the training department. And I was going to ask people if, if they thought it might be a good idea to do some more in um, August or September time. I know most people will be away in August, so it's a bit, perhaps a bit pointless doing it then. But, you know, let, let me know if you think that it would be worth uh, doing some more, because really we did it as a kind of emergency measure in the first place. Uh, when everyone went into lockdown, I just started delivering them um, because I thought it might be handy. And of course, I've done it 21 times now. 
<laughs> it's going went a bit bananas to be honest so that's absolutely fine um just let us know jason maybe if you could take a note of a few people who are interested in doing that we can talk to training and then put on some more uh, and obviously get that out to you asap so you can book on they do get they do get very uh, very full okay so that's great from jane thank you for that uh, so i'm just saying what old ways i don't know do, do, i don't even remember three months ago anymore so yeah uh, much more flipped and blended learning says bill yeah absolutely um i think that uh the things that we've been talking about for donkey's years have now suddenly come to the fore and we're all kind of up for it or many many people are up for it um which is great good quality session says beth well i don't know if it was like my best show but hey you know i did my best in the circumstances so thank you for that um please, yeah as i say please do let us know if you think other people would like it who is free for who is it free for do you mean uh it, everybody <laughs> This, this particular session, I asked the training department if we could, uh, in JISC, if we could run this one for free, and they said, yeah, no problem. Uh, no problem, Sandra. Yes, sir, can I, I ask, I think um, there's two levels, I think, here, there's probably more than two levels, but one of them certainly are those who haven't really given um, a, a thought in the changing circumstances to how to present, and maybe some who should know better, and I think I would probably put myself into that category, I will put my hand up and say that I think I'm surely delivered God knows how many and subjected God knows how many audience members to um, bad presentations over my many years of presenting. Um, and we all know the reasons why it's, uh, it's comfortable and easy to stick together a PowerPoint slide and then stand in front of it and point up here now and again and read off stuff. Um, any particular tips as to how to break habits and uh, move things on? Um, a lot of it is about practice and also you can rehearse. We call it rehearsals. It's like we're doing a show and we do rehearsals with our colleagues um, and we come up with the activities that we want to do and then we test them. And we also, when we first started, we used to have a script. Now, I'm not saying you should all have a script, but it's helpful to have a script when you first start out because you afterwards you go, oh, I forgot to say this or whatever it was. It's helpful to have a script that, to remind you just the main points you want to say and to um, have your interactions. We have our interactions in bold. So it says chat with stars around it. So you know that that's the interaction you want to do with them. In fact, I can send you the slide deck after this if you'd like it and you'll see my, it's not really a script and I haven't even got it open, but I've, probably because I've done it so many times, but you know, it'll say um, chat, chat pod or it'll say, you know, poll or annotation, stamp tool, and then it just helps you to keep, by the time you've done it a few times, it's not really a script anymore, but certainly rehearsing and having a script are very, very helpful when you first start out. What I've done, somebody also just asked a, a question a bit higher up and it said, are ideas for icebreakers at the start of the session? Now it's funny you should say that, Kenji, because I'm in the process of writing um, a, a blog post and I've put a link in there to just my all my blog posts. Um, but I'm writing one at the moment about bonding, building bonds, it's called, because I like alliterations, building bonds during induction. And how can you get your learners to be making friends with each other as well as you making friends with them? And part of it's going to be about live online sessions and how you can use these interactive tools and techniques to be able to help people engage with each other. So um, you know word search is just one of them but asking people to post a photo of themselves and then have a little you can ask questions to each other you can send them if into breakout rooms to have chats with each other i think there's quite a few things you can do to to um to do some icebreakers uh when you're first starting out and nadia has put in a scoop it for for icebreakers and they're going to send us the link so that's really helpful thank you for that okay at that point and um, for the purposes of ending the recording the uh, informal community chat will continue here um but can i just say thank you very much to esther for that this is obviously a subject that's going to be pretty important for time to come uh, so with that i'll draw the recording to a close <laughs>